News. To the tiny town of Allegheny in its original 16 to 1 gold mine. After a hiatus that lasted the better part of 20 years, the 16 to 1 is producing again, thanks largely to the efforts of company president Mike Miller and a new way of finding gold. The mine was inactive. We didn't have anybody really working. We were paying all close to 4,000 a month just for the power to keep the pumps going. And two of the ex-miners, or one of the ex-miners, came up with the idea of bringing these little metal detectors in the mine. We started and we had almost immediate success. Miller is as comfortable in the mine shaft as he is at a board meeting. There are 26 miles of tunnels down here running through a vein that, by Miller's estimates, is only about 20% depleted. We're going right down the center of where the vein was. You'll see the vein right here. It took a lot of work to get the 16 to 1 up and running. It was closed in 1965 when regulated gold prices made it unprofitable. Miller got gold fever in 1974 when the price was deregulated. There's new tempers had to be put in. The tunnels had to be cleaned up. Some places track repaired. So it's just, it's been a, a very time consuming, laborious uh, attempt to reopen the mine. Miller's 16 to 1 stock is listed on the Pacific Exchange. That stock took off early this year thanks to major strikes ferreted out by metal detectors. The metal detectors will give a reading and so it takes away some of the risk of just going in blocks of ground that have no values. Oh, I'm getting a little reading there. Mike Miller is proud of what he does and the way he does it, trying to leave the land the way nature created it. I think we can set some examples for how mining should be done and what is realistic about mining. Uh, we, don't, we don't use any chemicals in our process. We, uh, it's free milling gold. You can see that it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it separates with gravity. and it, it's, uh, We all feel good about the environment. We recycle. We use our waste for road sands. I think it's a good example of what, how industry can take care of nature when uh, you're out in this remote areas. Mike Miller has big plans for the 16 to 1. He is trying to raise money to expand the mine and hopes to produce 20,000 ounces of gold every year. Hey, Miles Saunders reports tonight on a couple of blue collar guys who made good a story found only in California. 4 1 of Summer Sanders with a convincing. In the middle fork of the Yuba River in Sierra County, they're going back to work these days, back to work deep underground at the biggest gold mine left in the district, the 16 to 1. This is a story of how a couple of blue collar guys have kept a mine going in hard times. Worked uh, for about a month, and a friend of mine by the name of Randy Yeager called up and he said, Come on, let's go up and uh, fool around the mine. And Ian and I were both unemployed. So I just thought, hey, what a great idea. Let's, let's see if we can go for it. It seems at times like mining from the next century. Squawking and chattering sounds like robots out of Star Wars. The idea, hardly original, was to take metal detectors in to see what miners over 80 years might have left behind. There's a target right here. This is what I call a screamer. When it goes up to that high-pitched scream, I have a real dense target. And like I said, it could be this big or it could be this big. What they found in the last seven weeks is $300,000 worth of gold, often tucked away from the original miner's eye by six inches or so of quartz. The old-timers would be turning in their grave. They know we had these things. There she is. This is gold. We were surprised at the uh, metal detector being an exploration tool and the success that it had, but we really maybe all of us underestimated the strength of this mine. Uh, this, the this specimens have ranged from the small to, in terms of gold, the huge. It has, for now, breathed some life back into a mine that shut down in December by buying it some time to find new long-term investors. All of it apparently because a few unemployed blue-collar guys, rock musicians by night, hard rock miners by day, got a wild idea and went with it. I was real skeptical and I kept being pushed into it. I decided, what the heck, got nothing to lose. So we tried it and it's, it's worked great. 
In Allegheny, Miles Saunders, Channel 3 reports. Woohoo, so gold to them to our hills. And that small gold bar you just saw there, saw him pouring it, said to be worth about $70,000. Well, our search for buried treasure takes us next to the tiny little town of Allegheny, located about 180 miles northeast of San Francisco in Sierra County. Now, this is beautiful country, and Allegheny is a tiny town. In fact, this is the main street running right through town, a town with a lot of history, because this area has been consistently producing gold since 1851. This is one of the most famous high-grade gold districts in the world. And Allegheny is also the location of one of California's most famous gold mines, the original 16 to 1 mine. Over a million ounces of gold have come out of this mine since the 1800s. And these days, the mine is still operating, still producing some fine gold. This is like a cross section through the mountain. This, should, this really represents about 100 years of mining up here in Allegheny. And it's about 25 miles of tunnels. And so stokes. this is the 16 to 1 mine? This is the mine. It looks like an inverted saucer. We've got a 3,000 foot shaft that goes down to the bottom. And each one of these colored lines represents a level, either going north or south, right on the vein. And the dots themselves represent high grade gold that was found in that particular location. Wow. So this is what has been dug all these tunnels in the last hundred years. That's right. And the main problem that all of us had when we started to reactivate this mine was from this blue line on down, it was all full of water. So this area was left open to um, air, but from this point on, for 25, 30 years, it was underwater. Wow. And right now, we have water left only on one level, and that's this 2,400-foot level. I right had no bottom. idea. So what you're saying is that all these mountains that we're standing in the middle of, underneath them, are all these tunnels. That's right. We're standing right here, right now. And we're going to go, today, we're going to go way out over to this direction. We've got oh, a long boy. trip ahead of us. Wow. <laughs> the old 16 to 1. I had no idea. 25 miles of tunnels. 25 miles. Well, I guess we better get going. I think so. We're not going to walk. We're going to ride. We're going to ride at least the first half a mile. <laughs> now, it's one thing to talk about gold mines. It's another to actually go down in one. But the guys at the 16 to 1 invited me to spend the day with them mining for gold thousands of feet below the surface. And that was just too good an opportunity to pass up. So we were off. This guy just asked me a question. I hope you're not claustrophobic. I'm not claustrophobic, but did you have to learn not to be claustrophobic? Well, not really. I started off when I was really young. There's been a couple times when I've been underground that I got a little claustrophobic, but no, you get used to it. But this is like a lot more open than I thought it would yeah, be. Yeah, most people say that we bring underground. They go, it's, it's nothing like I pictured. It's, it's a lot different. People get a preconceived notion in their mind, and then they, they realize it's different underground. Do you have to prepare yourself to go underground every day mentally in the sense of do you get used to it or is it something that you have to prepare for every day? You get used to it, but the most important thing is, it, is that you realize that because you are used to it that you, you have to think about safety. Safety is real yeah. important, so you do prepare yourself for that. Now, how much further do we have to go on the train? The tunnel is about 1,800 feet long and we're halfway in right okay. now. Okay, so we still got a ride ahead of we us. we got a ways to go, yeah. Wow. This is neat. Just in case I have a heart attack, I better tell you what to do so you guys don't ride this thing forever. So what you want to do is, uh, first of all, there's an emergency cord that you can pull and that'll stop the skip. But you need to tell the hoist operator where we want to go. So we're standing at this level. Our first stop is at the 1500. So I'll be ringing one bell and five bells. That tells them where to go. And then we come up here and we say, what are we going to be doing? Well, we're going to have men on board. So we'll do three bells and one. So that'll tell the man operating the skip that we're going to the 1500 level and ding, 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 there's men on board. So there's a whole system of bells just to get us up and down on this thing. That's right. 
this is more complicated than it than it appears, isn't it? It is. It is. It takes a little while to learn how to do some of these things. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go. I don't. I'm not sure. I know what to do. Well, you're just gonna put your all the way down? No, no, that's right there. Now just do that. So you're going to enjoy the view. We're going to kind of relax. All right, just lean back. Wow. Now we want to keep our hands in. All right. And uh, we're going to have about a three-minute ride. All right, give him the... Okay. Here we go. This is the funniest feeling. <laughs> wow this is such an amazing now i gotta tell you i'm beginning to get a little bit claustrophobic uh well i want to tell you one t one time one of my friends from um, college days was a chopper pilot in vietnam and he came i took him in the mine and we were starting down like this and he said mike i, I gotta tell you i think i'm having an anxiety attack yeah, we're really tight in here. It is. That part of it is though just the uh, strange environment. There, look at that quartz. See how the we're going right under the quartz vein right now. And as you look around, you can see uh, some of the workings and the old timbers. And we've passed a couple of spots that maybe we'll see uh, then when we get to the 1500 level of some fungus growing. People always ask me, are there bats in the mine? I say, no, not down here. But every now and then you'll find a. Uh, insect, a bee, or spider, or something. Whoa! Uh, here's the hump. Is it okay to feel a little anxious now? Because I'm feeling it. I, I think so. It's just, uh, well, like the roller coaster rides or anything like that. Only you don't have any way to anticipate because you don't know what's ahead of you. Now, how long has this been here like this, dug down? Well, the original winds was put in uh, in the uh, 1940s, but it had to be extensively retimbered. You'll notice all the timbers as we're going down. And it was it really became operable about uh, six years ago. Wow. Well, here we are. Now we made that trip. Well, now it's on to another little train. 1500 level. Yeah, I think you're going to be sitting in this car and I'll drive the trammer. So we're going to go back. We're going to go about uh, a couple of thousand feet now on this level. We could hoof it, but let's ride this When are we car. going to see some other people? <laughs> They're beginning to wonder if we're the only ones no, here. I mean, I, I, we all kind of came in together. Where is everybody? They're just scattered right now. But no, we'll see two guys as soon as we get back at the end of this little ride. <laughs> I mean, that, this is an operating mine. I want to see some mining. Now, this is the idea I had of what a mine would look well, like. Wow, we're getting closer and closer to what a mine looked like. I Remember, mean, this is... Now, you'll see two types of timbering in here, too. You'll see the square, square, square timbering. There's an old pole. That's probably was put in 60, 70 years ago. And then you'll go through some of our newer timber in this in here. Wow. And there'll be spots where you'll see the white quartz vein. And see, if this tunnel is called a drift. This is what they call sometimes drift mine. And there's our first shot of the vein right there. Now it's coming into view. This is something. Oh, uh, this is what we all like. What do you mean, this is what we I, all like? Well, I think the miners, even you know, sometimes I guess everybody takes their work for granted, but when you start coming into a place like this and seeing all the crystals and um, quartz veins and the whole matrix of the geology here, it's pretty um, humbling, I guess. Oh, you look at this. Now we have white quartz on both sides of it. White quartz. Oh, man. And here's a little hole over on the right that's, uh, where they broke through and the rays coming up. We're going in the gut of the mine now. This is where gold was produced from areas all around us. Now this is getting a little steep around here. Yeah, this is our mill rock here. This is what we're slushing. And uh, we've got a big pile of ore here and we're sending this to the mill right now. Is this steep or is this just me out of breath? Well, it's Out deep. of shape. It's steep. Big muck pile. Okay. And yes, you are out of shape. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm out of shape. What am I supposed to say? 
I'm not a miner. <laughs> now, is there gold all around here? You this, this, yeah, yeah, there is. This is this is ore. There's it gold in it. But yeah. I don't see any gold. Well, a lot of it's inside the rock where you can't see it. If we took a metal detector and played it around here, we'd pull gold out of the pile. Uh-huh. We every day. It happens that way. Well, why did I have visions of walking down a shaft and looking up and seeing a big streak of gold running through the side of a rock. Well, the next time you come up here, we're going to have that. We have had that before, and when we're actually mining, breaking the rock, uh, that's what we're looking for. We're breaking the white quartz, and uh, the, yeah, well, that, happens, that happens quite often. And what happens when you see a big streak of gold in a rock? Do you go crazy? I think, yeah. Bonus dollars. Tells us what, right where it's at. Give a little signal. There's gold right there. It's gold right there. Hear that? That's gold. <laughs> I can see it. There it is right there. Wow. And gold. that small amount of gold can be picked up by that. The mm -hmm. Here, put it over there again. Let's. <laughs> this is a real sensitive machine. Not all the machines Here, are grab sensitive. That. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, it's just a teeny little piece. Yeah, that's that's not even a penny weight there. But, those but your up. detector picked it up. Yeah, right there. Kind of takes some of the glamour out of it, though, doesn't it? Oh, no. No. <laughs> oh, this is exciting finding it. No matter how you find it, it's, it's, we're using tools of today. Yeah. Oh, you know? okay. Makes sense. Yeah, we have to have some technological progress here. <laughs> So now we're putting the dynamite into the rock. So we have a little bit of a ravelly hole, so it's kind of done with a little bit of care and a little bit of finesse. Yeah, another one here, like that. All the way to the bottom. And there's the fuse. Have we got anything like a, that's the fuse. This is the end that we're going to light right here. We got it like a, some stemming. How long is this fuse? This fuse is uh, right four feet. feet. No, but I mean, how much time? How much time? Do we have after we light the fuse to get away from it? Three minutes. Okay, Louis. I hope you got Okay, Louis, you got your track shoes on, buddy? Uh, I've got mine on. We got plenty of time. Don't worry about it. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Oh, my gosh. Fire in the hole. So now we've got how long? Now we've got three minutes to walk that way. No, not walk that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are getting out of here. Come on. Any time, huh? Late. Now, what happens if we stand here for 10 minutes and it doesn't go off? Then we wait for an hour, an hour, hour 45 minutes. That's how long you, you wait? wait? Yeah, in case we have a slow-burning fuse or something like that. Very rarely does that happen. Very rarely. Well, I'm going to sit down. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that would be good See? on camera. See? Like a thunderclap, huh? <laughs> it wasn't much. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. All right. Bingo. As Let's they see say. it. Bring that, it down here. That's Let's... high grade. Right there. I knew it was in there. How did you know? Now, that? how much is this <laughs> worth? <laughs> Geo, Geo Kim work. How much is this worth? Let me let me hold it. Whoa. Oh. That's uh, it's about one hundred fifty dollars worth right there. Really? Yeah. You see that up there? It's still going. See that? That's gold from there or to there. So your metal detector was right. Yeah, it was. Now, how does it make you feel finding this gold? It makes me feel like I've got a job tomorrow still. <laughs> it makes you feel good. This is what we're here for. We're to bring in the high grade. Uh huh. Keep this boat floating, if to use the metaphor. Uh, it makes me feel good. I'm a successful miner. All right, you're a successful miner. Look at these two guys down here. <laughs> They're still looking. They look like a couple of dogs, don't they? Fellas, we told you where's be, the gold? Could be hundreds of ounces and could be just one ounce. And we all work for the same company that he does. So you're all going to so split the... We'll have a job tomorrow, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, the day I spent down in the 16 to 1 mine is one I'll never forget. And I'd like to thank the guys for taking us along and showing us firsthand what underground gold mining is all about. But at the end of the day, when we came out of the mine back to the surface, 
we still had one unexpected treat in store. We got to watch as they poured some liquid gold into bars. And that was something to see. Oh, wow. That's a big pour. How much gold is in there? We probably have around $50,000 in these three bars. Really? 45000 Now, is this commonplace for you to do this every day? Well, we don't do it as often as we would like to, but uh, uh, we do it about once a week. Uh -huh. Not this much because this has a bunch of high grade in it, but we process the mill concentrates weekly. Well, let's see. I want to see what it looks like outside the... Don't drop it. It's durable. So it's down in there now. So you just knock it out of those... It's a lot of hard work and and not for a minute do we take this for granted that it just comes easy. It's uh, We really respect the gold that it's been down there for that long and uh, we appreciate it uh, that we can uh, take it and turn it into cash and uh, and be here. Yeah. Just the way the miners were a hundred years ago. <laughs> Pretty much. We drive newer cars. <laughs> Now this is an example of California's gold. Right. The real California's gold. How do you like my calendar? That's right, underground gold miners of California, 12 months ago. Not deep, but I'm sure you can dig it. We're interested in Mr. June. Michael Miller is president of what is probably the highest tech gold mine in the world. It's a, it's a thrill-seeking kind of thing. Uh, you know, the environment down here is very foreign, as you can tell. Uh, we're working with explosives, and when it pays off, and we, we blow up rock, and the floor is glittering with gold and wire, and you're looking at uh, $100,000, and you know your job's a little more secure for a while, and it's, it's real exciting. It's called the original 16 to 1. Between 1896 and 1965, this underground mine in the Sierra Nevada produced $350 million worth of gold. In those days, miners used their eyes and their instincts to strike it rich. Modern miners are using technology to find the mother load. Miners are so macho, they don't want to take an electrical tool in, and they didn't have the patience to, to read it. I mean, it's been tried before, but the mix just wasn't there. Just months ago, the 16 to 1 almost became extinct. The conventional ways of finding the gold weren't working. The company was broke, and the president, Michael Miller, so desperate, he had his men bring in metal detectors. Sounds like an obvious idea, but nobody had ever tried it. Instead of guessing where there might be gold, they were now able to see eight inches into the rock by scanning the mine walls. This technology just takes out so much of the guesswork, you know. You can just walk up and, and like Johan was saying, you, you can see what's in there. You don't have to blow it up to see what's in there. Now we're going back through and picking up a lot of the gold that they left. They did not get it all, and we've already proven that. In only three months, the metal detectors have pulled out one million dollars worth of gold. But these miners believe there is more gold farther in, and the next step is to look even deeper. Today, they are experimenting with the latest innovation, radar. Yes, the same kind used to track airplanes. It's giving these miners the possibility to see not eight inches, but 13 feet into the rocks. Here's the situation. We're about a half mile into this mine, about 800 feet down, and these guys are using a computer. Is this unusual? Well, you probably won't see this going on in any other mine in the country. But in here, it's not unusual at all. This isn't the only technology they're trying out here. Now, as a matter of fact, this place is a kind of a high-tech lab for miners. See, that's right about three feet in. 
halfway down the vein. That looks good. Yeah, let's really... The way it works is simple. The radar sends out a microwave signal, and it bounces back at different speeds. The computer reads those speeds in different colors. When you see blue, the signal is reading quartz, and when you see red, the signal is reading gold. Not all the work is done underground. Once the radar has scanned the walls, the miners make maps of the vein showing the areas that should have gold. According to the computer, this wall showed the highest concentration of gold. But the only way really to test the radar theory is to drill a few holes, fill them with dynamite, and blast. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! The experiment paid off. The radar detected an invisible vein, and one day's work turns up at least $10,000 in nuggets. Well, here it is. This is what it's about. We found the spot. We drilled it. We blasted it. This is, this is roughly uh, $10,000 worth in here so far. We're still picking it up. Uh, this will keep our pumps running for two months. Our electricity bill is $4,000 plus a month just to pump this mine out. That's what it's about. The happy yellow stuff. This isn't the first or last experiment for the original 16 to 1. It's become a testing ground for innovations in mining. Ideas for other inventions come through their mailbox every day. But even with technology looking to the future, these miners hold on to the spirit of the pioneers who came before them. I would like to have some of those guys around us today because you figure they had to find it the old-fashioned way. And uh, it was not by using electronics and all of the technology we have. So I, I will always take my hat off to the old-timers. It's just tremendous what they've done. This is the easy part. Take a train. Then jump into a skip and slide down a shaft. Then walk about a half a mile. And finally, get ready. From here on down, it's slide on your butt. Hold on. Nobody's been in here for how long? It's been about uh, 40 years. It's pretty flat right here, John. I think we'll have to kind of slide. If you... Uh, if you kick a big rock loose, well, I give a yell, so we don't want any surprises. Like that one. <laughs> Not a good place to get claustrophobic. Yeah, that looks pretty dark down there. From here on, we'll be sloshing through the mud. It has taken years to pump the water from these tunnels so we can get this far. Think for a moment where we are. 2,400 feet below ground. I'm in two feet of water. And we're still going. That's mine engineer Johan Radzma testing our humor. Oh, uh, life is sweet. Right. 2,400 level, half a mile below the surface of the earth, and I'm relaxing in the sunshine. Just don't forget, it's our batteries that's making that light, and we've only got a little while to work underground before the air goes stale. But gold makes... You've got to remember that when this mining operation was going in the 1950s, there were very, very few mines left working. And they, uh, the operation didn't quit for lack of gold. It quit because it was no longer uh, profitable to mine it. Today, these sensitive metal detectors sing their way to the riches these old-timers missed. That sounds you good. You got something? I got a maybe. A whack of the pick, and there it is, a vein of high-grade gold, two feet long and an inch thick. A couple of thousand dollars of yellow fall under our hands, but then the light goes out for a moment, the camera hiccups, and we wonder, maybe those old ghost stories are true. I think there is definitely a spirit of the mine, and it, it would have to reside at the lower levels. So we've had interesting experiences where you don't know really what to attribute it to, just like your equipment not working, or valves sometimes being turned on, and things like that. Okay, Ghost, we get the hint. We're out of here. But thanks for letting us peek at history and line our pockets with some of your riches. On assignment, California, in the 16 to 1 mine, John Iander, KOVR 13 News. I don't think he shared any of that with us when he got back, did he? No. Miners at the 16 to 1 have a little extra incentive to work in all of that wonderful mud. They get a percentage of the gold that they find.
History could be made this evening at a mine in the gold country of Sierra County. Miners hope to remove the largest gold nugget ever found. The 16 to 1 mine is located near the town of Allegheny, which is north of Sacramento, northeast of Grass Valley. Today, workers dug out about a thousand ounces of gold from that mine, and they're going to set off another charge in the hopes of freeing up a single giant gold specimen. Reporter Tom Duhane is at the 16 to 1 mine tonight. He's going to have a live report for us on the evening news at 6.30. It's 6.30 p.m. and you're watching KCRA TV, where the news comes first. With Kelly Brothers, Sarah Gardner, Weather with Shelley Monahan, Eric McClendon on sports, home of Michael Kidd and Live Copter 3, and Northern California's number one news team. This is Channel 3 Reports. The California gold rush is well over, but miners in Sierra County tonight are working to 